Hello everybody and welcome to Steins Gate. Uh, this game, it was just released on Steam. Uh, this game actually came out back in like 2009, I think, and everybody loved it. It's a great game. I've never actually played it, but everyone says it's really good and amazing and stuff. And I didn't know it wasn't on Steam until like the new releases was like, hey, Steins Gate is out. So I bought it and we're gonna play it now. Uh, so like I said, I've never played the game before. Uh, Everything is coinciding. So I've never played the game. I've watched the anime. It's one of my favorite animes ever. Uh, the only difference really... Well, I mean, there's probably going to be lots of differences. The biggest thing is that there are mil multiple endings in the game. Uh, there is one true ending, and that's the one the anime is based off of. Have you heard of the butterfly effect? Yes. Ooh, I didn't mean to skip that. But anyways, that's there. Ooh, what's going on? That was weird. Anyways, yeah. So the true ending is uh, what the anime is based off of. I could probably just remember everything from the anime and follow that exactly. I don't plan to do that exactly. I'll all try to just make my own decisions as they come up, but I, I kind of would like the idea of getting the true ending. But then again, it's cool to get different endings too. So I don't know what we're gonna do. We'll worry about that when we get our decisions. Uh, hey, what are you mumbling about? This is probably my Yuri. There's no sound from the phone against my right ear, only silence. I am baking in the summer sun. Sweet, slowly, sweat slowly slides down my chin and drips onto the asphalt. Uh, Ocarin, Earth to Ocarin. A girl is standing in front of me. She calls my name with an inquisitive tilt of her head. We are about to infiltrate deep into enemy territory, yet despite the imminent risk of death, there is no hint of tension in her, on her innocent, childlike features. I cover my phone's mouthpiece and turn to the girl with an index finger to my lips. You talking to someone? I nod and put my phone back to my ear. Still no sound from the other side. My contact is wise to maintain silence. The whole area could be bugged. <laughs> no. I was just talking to someone. Everything's fine. I'm about to infiltrate the assembly hall. Still no reply. Looks like they just want my report. <laughs> it's too dangerous to waste time talking here anyways. Yeah. Dr. Nakabachi got the jump on us. But I'll make sure he tells us everything. New tips. We got new tips. What? The organization is already on the move. I open my eyes wide to match my shocked tone. The girl turns toward me in surprise. I sigh, shaking my head as I rub my temples. I see. So that's the choice of Steinsgate. El Sai Kongru. I speak the parting words, then pack a pocket my cell phone. Steinsgate. Some know it as fate, to others, it is the will of God. You could count on the hand of the people in this world, aware of its true nature. In any case, we should begin the infiltration. I advance towards Radikan, which is just across the street from the train station. Alright, so so far this is very similar to the enemy, uh, as far as the character goes. Uh, Rintoro? Okarin? It's nuts. I mean, really, the only thing I was hoping for, as long as Mayuri keeps her, uh, signature catchphrase everything else could be completely different and i'd still be happy anyways i'm sure we'll get to hear it i hope we do of course this is enemy territory i can't just stride through the front door like an average person i bypass the elevators and escalators and head to the eighth floor by the stairwell but i only make it to the seventh floor before i have to stop and rest who was that on the phone the girl Shina Mayuri immediately resumes our conversation. She followed me all the way here and she isn't even short of breath. I, on the other hand, am gasping for air with my hands on my knees. Who would have thought an eight-story building would be so tall? 
I turned on my Yuri while wiping the sweat off my brow. If I told you, I'd have to kill you. Oh, wow. Thanks, Sokarin. <laughs> my Yuri smiles happily and doesn't pry any further. As always, she is quick to understand my position. <laughs> We've known each other since we were both little. Mayuri is 17, two years younger than me, so she's more like a little sister than a typical childhood friend. I've been looking out for her as long as I can remember. I used to hope that Mayuri might become the key to Steinsgate, but now I've reconsidered. I don't want that terrible fate for her. She should live a normal life. That is my present wish. Up the stairs we go to our uh, assembly room. We continue to the 8th floor and enter the assembly hall. In front of us stands a cheap looking stage with a podium and a sign reading Dr. Nab Nakabachi's Time Machine Press Conference. Okarin, Okarin, Okarin. Mayuri insists on calling me Okarin, but it's neither my real name nor my code name. It's just one of those annoying nicknames people use. Really, I have no idea. I just thought his name was Okarin. I don't remember him ever saying it wasn't in the... Anyways. Rintaro. Yeah, that is his name. I just thought it was Rintaro Okarin. Or Okarin Rintaro. How many times do I have to tell you, don't call me Okarin? Huh? But I've always called you that. That was then. I have since become... <laughs> oh yeah, Hoin Kyoba. The insane mad scientist hunted by his secret organizations the world over. But that's too hard to remember. In any case, Hoin Kyoma is my true name. I'm pretty sure Okarin is his real name. And besides, it doesn't even sound like... Okabe. Okabe, not Okarin, yes. Okabe Rintaro. You're weird. <laughs> Cease your foolish laughter. Okabe Rintaro may be my real name, but I have rejected it, for it is stupid. And so, I also hate the der <laughs> derivative Okarin. Come on, it sounds like that elf boy's blue pipe thing. So, Okarin, can I ask you something? In one ear and out the other. She's been calling me that for five years now, so maybe it's time to give up. What are we doing here? Wait, you followed me here without knowing why? Yep. She nods without dropping her smile. We're here for the Dr. Nak Nakabachi's press conference. We're standing in the assembly hall on the 8th floor of Radikan. It is here that the conference will be held. Dr. Nakabachi is an inventor. He appears on TV from time to time and has a few patents under his belt, but mostly he is treated as a curiosity. Press conference? But where are the reporters? Mayuri is right. Where are they? I've scanned the entire hall, but there's no one who looks like a reputable reporter or cameraman. There are only about 10 of us standing in the hall, including me. Considering Nakabachi's moderate media presence and the fact that he claims to have invented a time machine, I would have expected more. Could this be the organization's working its twisted influence? I twist my lips into a sneer. I thought that Nakabachi was like me, a scientist fighting to overthrow the organization. But this press conference suggests other motives at work. Our enemies won't miss this chance. I'd prefer not to get wrapped up in his mess. Nevertheless, I'm interested in what he has to say. That's why I'm here, blowing an afternoon of my precious summer holiday. Mayuri ponders my utterance for a while before finally turning her head. You wrapped something. Is it a bir is it his birthday too? <laughs> I let it aside. Mayuri is known not only to make bad jokes but to laugh at them too. She's always been special. 
Keep your guard up, Mayuri. I suspect this won't be a normal comfort. I didn't even finish my sentence. Are we under attack? Are they trying to fry our brains with electromagnetic waves? A crash. Dust falls from the ceiling as the floor shakes. We're definitely under attack. It's coming from above, but we're on the top floor. All that above, all that's above is the roof. An earthquake? Is it magnitude 2? What does magnitude mean again? Oh, my Yuri. Never change. No time to deal with my Yuri's confusion. Something's not right about this. I bolt out of the conference hall and run up the stairs to the roof, ignoring the no pressing trespassing signs on my way. The door is open. Upon closer inspection, I realize that the door lock has been broken. I open the door and see a billowing cloud of black smoke. There's some kind of phosphorescent dust sparkling in the air. An explosion? I can't believe it. Was there really an explosion? My heart is racing. Damn, I don't know what to do. Should I run away? But why an explosion? Terrorists? No, that doesn't fit. I mean, how do you explain that? Bam. What the? A strange machine is sitting in the middle of the roof. It's huge, maybe three meters tall and looks kind of like a satellite. Did that thing cause the shaking just now? Who put it here? Was it Dr. Nakabachi? Is this part of his presentation? Impossible. Even if that were the case, how the hell would he get it up here? My head is bursting with questions. As I search for the courage to approach the machine, a throng of reporters and building staff bursts onto the rooftop. They look just as confused as I am. Please stay back, everybody. And then a woman, who I assume is a staff member, appears to wave us back. The press conference will proceed as scheduled. Is she trying to hide something? Her response was unusually quick, almost like she's trying to keep me away from that device. I've got a nose for conspiracies and this stinks of a cover-up. What are they hiding? What was that explosion? I want to know, but I shouldn't risk getting any closer. I turn and leave. But not because I'm scared or anything like that. Of course not, we're not scared. We're hoeing Kiyoma. How could we be scared? Staff members lead all of us back to the 8th floor. Mayuri is nowhere to be seen. She's not in the event hall either. I find her on the 7th floor. Capsule toy. Several capsule toy machines are lined up next to a plate reading birthplace of the Japanese PC. She's gazing upon them with a wistful look. I breathe a sigh of relief and then take out my phone. It's me. I've got a bad feeling about this. Something's happening and I have no idea what it is. Yeah, I know. Don't worry. I won't do anything to jeopardize the mission. L. Sai Kongo. After I speak the words and hang up, I'm able to wipe the sweat from my forehead. My sweat is cold. Half of me hopes something will happen, the other half fears the same thing. I put away my phone and look back at my Yuri. She's still staring at those capsule toys. She doesn't seem to be worried about the explosion at all. I can't decide if she's level-headed or just air-headed. What are you doing? Huh? Well, I really want an Upa. Just as I thought. Oh boy. <laughs> Mayuri points to a capsule machine. The sign on the front says Rainnet Kakaru 3D Character Doll Series. Rainnet Kakaroos is a popular animal anime series with its own card game spin-off, Rainnet. Access Battlers. They even hold international tournaments. 
Hoopa is the series mascot character. It resembles an elliptical egg with limbs sticking out, like some kind of deformed dog. What is... It's what they call an ugly cute character. High school girls find these creatures adorable for some reason. Last year an ugly frog character was the rage. Its name escapes me though. <laughs> then go for it. I can't guarantee you'll get an Upa though. Mayuri gives me a troubled smile. But Mayushi's all out of 100 yen coins. <laughs> Mayushi's is what Mayuri calls herself sometimes. According to her, it's supposed to have a star at the end. Mayushi. <laughs> but who really cares? So, can I borrow a hundred yen, please? Absolutely, Mayuri. She holds out her hand with a look like a begging puppy. Looks like she was planning this from the very beginning. Well, at least she didn't say gimme. Do you think it's that easy, Mayuri? You'll get no money from me. Instead, I'll show you just how harsh life really is. Aww, oh, how can you say no to that face? I pull out a hundred yen coin, see, see, set it into the machine slot, and spin the lever. Ah, uh, I know what it's gonna be already. I open the capsule and take out the contents. Mayuri leans forward eager, eagerly to see what I got. It's it's an upa and it's metal, a metal upa. Is it rare? Super rare. While I examine the metal upa, a boy who is watching us tries his luck on the same Rhinet machine. Aww. A normal Upa. He looks at my metal Upa in resentment. I turn to see Mayuri's sparkling eyes also fixed on the Upa. Hey, high school girl, you're acting like a little kid. Aww. <laughs> I give this creature of metal to you, Mayuri. Honestly, I don't want it. Really? Are you sure, Ogarin? The name's Hoin Kyoma. <laughs> Thank you, Ogarin. Is she doing it on purpose? Thank you all for coming to Dr. Nakabachi's Time Machine press conference. I hear the announcement from the floor above. Sounds like they're starting. Up the stairs we go to rain on somebody's parade. I head to the stairwells, but Mayuri doesn't follow. Let's go, Mayuri. Uh, just a sec, I gotta write my name. She's preoccupied with the metal upa. I go on ahead. Without further ado, I am pleased to introduce the inventor, Dr. Nakabachi. Please welcome him with a big round of applause. Incredible applause by the stunning turnout of uh, viewers here. Dr. Nakabachi enters to sparse applause. He walks up to the podium. He's already wearing a frown. For some reason, I can feel his irritation from here. I am Dr. Nakabachi. Thank you all for coming. Nakabachi takes to the microphone and begins to speak, his voice brimming with confidence. Now then, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to begin with my theory of time travel, the greatest scientific breakthrough of the century. Did he really build a time machine? Mayuri appears after writing her name on the middle upa. She's a bit late, it's in more ways than one. What did she think a time machine presentation would be about? I take another look around the room. There are about 20 people now, including us, but still no media presence to speak of. So this is the extent of Dr. Nakabachi's fame. No one believes that he invented a time machine. 
I was interested in what he had to say true, but my expectations were no higher than the rest of the onlookers. And a good thing they weren't, as he proceeds to explain his time machine design, my curiosity quickly turns to disappointment, then anger. <laughs> my roar silences Nakabachi and dries the eye of every person in the room. Do you take us for fools? Who the hell are you? Who the hell am I? Someone who knows you for a fraud, that's who. <laughs> you stole the theory from John Titter, and you call yourself an inventor. Someone throw this man out. You're the one who should be thrown out, Doctor. You have no shame, you have no right to call yourself an inventor. Shut your mouth, you little pest. Just then, someone grabs my arm from behind. Quit. Quite convinced. It's an official here to throw me out. I turn around to glare him down. Unhand me, you. Huh? It's a girl about my age. Her intense stare seems to challenge me. I take a step back. Her face looks somehow familiar. Where have I seen her before? Oh. Ah. We haven't met, but I know her face. It's Makis Kurusu. Kurusu. A few days ago, my friend Daru showed me a magazine article titled the Girl Genius Gives Lecture in Akabara. The article was about a 17-year-old girl who had just graduated from an American university. Her thesis was even published in a major scientific journal. Girl genius, Makise Kurisu. I recognize the stubborn looking girl from her photograph. She's even wearing the exact same scowl. What business could such a genius have with me? She takes a quick look around the room, then turns back to me with a stern expression. Could you come with me for a moment? What's with her attitude? She's obviously not staff, and there's no way that Mekise Kurisu would be working with someone like Dr. Nakabachi. Which means, no. You're with the organization. Huh? If their tendrils have gotten this far, then I've made a grave mistake. Stop fooling around and come with me. My outburst has already attracted too much attention. Nakabachi, in particular, looks like he wants to rip my head off. It must be mortifying to be exposed as a fraud by a bright young man like myself. Yes, of course, Okarin. Anyway, I mustn't draw any more attention to myself. If the organization gets wind of my presence here, they could endanger my Yuri, to say nothing of these ignorant civilians. I let, Makisu Kurisu, I let Makise Kurisu lead me out of the assembly hall. Try anything and people are sure to notice. What will your superiors say then? What are you talking about? She glares at me quite fiercely at that. Attractive though she may be, there is no innocence in her eyes. A beautiful agent, unmatched in cruelty. My heart beats in exhilaration from the danger. Looks like chaos really does get my blood pumping. <laughs> I just need to ask you something. What makes you think I'll answer? I know how the organization operates. What's with this organization stuff? Instead of answering her, I take out my phone and put it to my ear. It's me. I've been caught by an organization agent. Yes, it's Makise Kurisu. She's a dangerous one. No, it's fine. I'll find a way to... Kurisu suddenly snatches the phone from my hand. What skill? I didn't have time to react. What are you doing? Huh? Your phone's off. <laughs> Who are you talking to? Her eyes pierce deep into my soul. I quickly look away. 
She's good. Is she trying to detect my sense of identity in order to cause a mental break? Recover. This isn't enough to sway me. <laughs> Your techniques don't work on me, but I'll tell you anyway. That's no ordinary phone. It's designed to deactivate the moment it leans my hand. <laughs> Such measures are necessary to maintain secrecy. I know things that, that could get me killed. I quickly retrieve my phone and wipe the cold sweat off my forehead. Phew, that was close. So you talk to yourself. Ugh. This is bad. Ordinary methods don't work on Makise Kurasu, the genius girl. On the contrary, she's the one psyching me out. Damn, looks like I'll have to make a tactical retreat. If I can just find an opening. Suddenly, Kurasu steps up to me with a serious expression. She stares right at me, her huge eyes blazing with strength of will. Such fire, I can't look away. Could someone with such pure eyes really be an organization agent? What were you trying to tell me earlier? Earlier? What are you talking about? About 15 minutes ago, before the conference started. Nonsense, this is the first time we've met. I was with my Yuri and that Upa toy 15 minutes ago. You were trying to tell me something, right? You look really upset. Is this a trap? It does seem like one of the organization's dirty tricks. But would this girl do something that underhanded? You look like you were going to start crying any second. Why? Have we met before? She seems sincere. That makes her even more suspicious. That's right. Don't let her beauty fool you. She's a cold, calculating secret agent. If I know the slightest vulnerability, I'm done for. And how do you know my name? My knowledge has no limits. I am a man scientist, after all. Genius girl, our next meeting shall be as enemies. Huh? Farewell. <laughs> I spin around and take off down the stairs, ignoring her call to stop, like I'd listen to the enemy. Damn, the organization. They must have been serious if they're sending agents like her. I run all the way down to the fourth floor and check behind me. Once I'm convinced Makise Kurisu's not tailing me, I sigh with rubbing my temples. But I can't let them capture me yet. Well then, what do I do now? My mission was to attend the conference and evaluate Dr. Nakabachi's research. Now that I know he's a fraud, there's no real point in going back. I guess I'll just go home. But wait, aren't I forgetting something important? Perhaps a certain friend of yours? Let's see now, what is it? Damn, I left my Yuri behind. I knew she'd be, a, she'd be a liability. I shouldn't have brought her along. I was trying to prioritize her safety, but got careless. I'll try calling her first. If she's alright, then I can just have her meet me here. With that thought in mind, I take out my phone and I turn it on. And it rings just as I do. Hmm, an email? It's not just a regular email, there's a video attached. And it's from an unknown address? I open the video file with some trepidation. Hmm. There's nothing but noise. Is this a prank or some sort of Marquise Kurisu style attack? Maybe the noise is some sort of make people go crazy frequency. No, wait. I don't remember giving her my mail address, so I'm probably just thinking too hard. Of course, I curse myself for being gullible enough to play the video. I have more pressing matters to deal with anyway. Lukako. 
I stopped the video and called my Yuri's phone from my address book. My Damn it, my Yuri. Why won't you pick up? Looks like I'll have to go back to the assembly hall. But things will get messy if I bump heads with Makise Kurusu again. Wait, don't tell me. Did that femme fatale kidnap my Yuri? Damn you, is that how the organization operates? Leaving without my Yuri isn't an option. Call me overprotective, but she's like a little sister to me. And there's a very real danger that she might wander off somewhere the moment I let her out of my sight. Mayuri has always been like that. I never know if she'll be there when I turn to look. In a sense, that's why I became Halloween Kiyoma. I have to go back for her. The thought of climbing back up the 8th floor is depressing, but I have no choice. When I get back to the assembly hall, Dr. Nakabeshi's conference has just finished. Nobody is on stage, and the phony inventor has already left. The 20 or so members of the audience are starting to pack up. I soon find Mayuri. She's in the corner looking lost. Well, at least she wasn't kidnapped. Even better, I don't see Makise Kurusu anywhere. Haha, <laughs> 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 looks like I scared her <laughs> off. So, be it. I'll let her go this time. Still, I keep my eyes peeled as I run up to Mayuri. Mayuri, why didn't you pick up? We're leaving. Oh, Karin, my metal Upa ran away. Oh no, Mayuri. She turns to me with a forlorn expression. Ran away? Wait, what? Is it alive? It's a little hard to believe. I think I dropped it. I see, so she wasn't. She was looking for it. Not like it really matters. Forget about it, you can always get another one. Don't you know it was super rare, Rintaro, come on. No way, metal upas sell upwards of 10,000 yen online, you know. Oh, wait, what? The toy was worth that much? Think, Mayuri, where did you drop it? <laughs> Now he's interested. I don't know, that's why I'm looking. And even if we find it, you can't sell it, okay? Aha, uh -huh, that 10,000 yen will fund my research. I said you can't sell it. It even has Mayushi's name on it. I forgot the star. Thus begins our search for the metal Upa. Yay, she said it. Game complete, we can turn it off now. It's all fine. Toot <laughs> Come out, come out, wherever you are. Mayuri tries calling its name. I don't know if she truly expects a response. By the way, Toot is Mayuri's catchphrase. It, it means... Actually, I've never bothered to ask what it means. Anyway, the metal Upa is nowhere to be found. Maybe she didn't drop it in the assembly hall, but on the seventh floor landing near the capsule toy machines. Another possibility is that someone with an eye for rare items pilfered it. Just imagining the smug grin on that person's face makes me writhe in envy. What kind of man steals a helpless girl's toy? Is there nothing in his heart but the lust for money? Sounds like you, Okaran. Whoa, wasn't expecting that from Mayuri. <laughs> what was that? What was that indeed? Was that a scream? I think so. Only the presen presen presenter and a few other people are left in the assembly hall, including Mayuri and me. Less than half the audience remains. Everyone looks at each other anxiously, startled by the scream. Even I cannot suppress a shiver. First the explosion on the roof, now this. What's going on here? Mayuri squeezes my hand tight. Mayuri, Stay here, Mayuri. I take a deep breath, prepare myself, and head into the direction of the scream. The echoes lead me down a dark, empty hallway on the same floor. I'm pretty sure it came from around that corner. 
I crouched down and turned the corner slowly, keeping my eyes and ears peeled for any sign of danger. And there, at the end of the passage, I see it. There's something on the ground. No, someone. Motionless. Who is it? The clothes are familiar. It can't be. <laughs> what? Makise Kurusu? Her face is turned away, but I know it's her. The imp impertinent genius girl I just fought with ten minutes ago is now face down in a pool of bright red blood. She's dead. No, but... Why? Suddenly I realize that I'm shaking. I want to run, run away. I shouldn't have come. This is wrong. Someone killed Makise Kurusu. There's no other explanation. Who would do such a thing? There's no one else here. I twist around in shock. Someone other, some other men have followed me. And every one of them is a ghastly pale. They must have seen the body. Call the police. A man cries out in panic. At this, everyone else starts screaming and running away. I follow them, of course. There's absolutely no reason to stay here. Concerned for Makise Kurasu, I superseded by superseded by my instinctive urge to flee. When I get back to the assembly hall, Mayuri is waiting for me with tears in her eyes. Oh, what happened, Okarin? We're leaving. I grab Mayuri's hand and run. I race down the stairs trying to drive the image of Kurasu's dead body from my mind. But I can't. The redness of her blood is burned into my mind, more than a sight of the body itself. That was my first time seeing a dead body. Is this what it's like when I realized that she was dead? I felt chilling terror and a surge of nausea. But that was all I felt, fear and disgust. Shouldn't there be something more? I guess I just didn't know her that well. I finally stop once we get out of the main street. Cho Dory. My chest pounds, my breathing labored from running down the stairs at full speed. Hey, what happened? You look really pale. Mayuri doesn't seem to comprehend the situation. I guess it's because she didn't see the body. She's not even breathing hard. She looks slow, but she's actually pretty fast on her feet. So someone died. Uh, I take several deep breaths. The color of that blood still stains my brain. But I've calmed down a bit. Makise Kurusu is dead. And I don't know who the killer is. Sirens in the distance. I guess an ambulance will be here soon. Then the police will arrive and this aerial will become a crime scene. But for now, the crowds milling through Akabara have no idea what has happened. Everyone is going about their business as usual. The never-ending search for electronics, moe, and porn. <laughs> Just another day in Akibara. I take my phone out of my pocket, perhaps out of reflex. I'm not sure what I plan to do with it. Oh, I know. My friend Daru. I'll tell him what happened just now, since he knows about Makise Kurusu. I suppose it might be disrespectful to the victim, but my adrenaline is pumping. I can't make calm decisions after witnessing something like that firsthand. That's how humans are, after all. We're just, we're not just, we're not as special as we like to believe. At the end of the day, we're nothing but dirty, slime-like flesh. Our souls fester like semen left to rot in the womb. That's not an image I want in my head. <laughs> That's how we humans are. While wallowing in a bit of angst, I begin to type on my phone. 
Someone stabbed Makise Kurosu. Look bad. Hope she's okay. Really? That's... So <laughs> I don't know if she was stabbed. That just seems like the most logical explanation, given the amount of blood and the absence of a gunshot. On the other hand, I didn't write that she was dead, even though I'm pretty sure she was. I can't exactly explain why I didn't. If I had to say it, I guess I felt like I'm writing it down would set it in stone. It might make me feel guilty as well. The thought brings a smirk to my face. It's not like I'm the one who killed her. Why should I feel guilty? I just saw someone's death up close, and only a few minutes later, I'm smiling. Am I really that cruel and cold? Well, I am a fiendship man scientist, so it suits me. I finish my typing and place my thumb over the send button. And then I press down. Sending. <laughs> what? And I think we're actually going to end right there. That was what I was waiting for to happen. That's a good spot to end. So next time, I, this is just as good as the anime so far. Maybe, maybe a little better. You get a little more insight into what's going through Rintaro's mind. Uh, he is all, seems, well, he was pretty crazy in the anime too. He is crazy here though too, and I'm glad. And my Yuri's just as good as ever. So next time we'll finish, well, we're not going to finish this next time unless you want like a 30 hour episode, but that's not going to happen. Anyways, next time we'll see what happened just then. I already know, but you guys can find out. Anyways, thanks for watching. We'll see you then and goodbye.